Okay, tech is trying here. Netflix and NVIDIA within a half a percent of positive in a very down market post inflation. Let's talk about big tech's role going forward and what it means if Fed uh, can't be quite as accommodative. Joining us, Fawaz Chowdhury is the head of equities at Fulcrum Asset Management. Uh, Fawaz, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a big macro event this morning with inflation coming in a bit hot, but we've seen big tech rally through higher yields in 2024, higher dollar. Is there any reason to think that they're not going to be able to do it again? Near time, I think the markets, something like tech, looking for a reason to pause. The print was high. Um, if you look at core services, core services, X shelter, super core, as they want to say, month on month came in super hot so i would say we'll see how the ppi and pce prints come as well but the market's taken out two-thirds of a cut almost a full cut for the end of the year um reason to pause i think it after a while it goes it rallies through ai the strength is too strong in the big cap tech the fundamentals are too strong yeah. is this from AI secular revolution or is this about better than expected economies and chip troughs behind us from kind of a macro swing. What's that combination of just macro versus the AI stuff? Well, the AI stuff, as we say, can translate into macro if uh, the amount of CapEx that these guys are putting into boots in the ground. So we currently see um, Dr. Lisa Su at AMD come out and say the GPU AI chips market will go from 40 billion last year to 400 billion in 2027. And it translates to about 800 billion in total server capex, including memory, networking, et cetera. And then 1.1 trillion overall, when you start talking about roads, the net data centers, and the networking. These numbers are gargantuan. The amount of capex is zooming through. Every big cap tech, the more capex they say they're doing, it's the so U.S. economy is strong, and the, now it's not just Chips Act, Infrastructure Act, and Inflation Reduction Act, and fiscal. It's the big cap tech are actually spending a lot, and uh, economy is hot, and we're seeing it in the CPI. But it's also translating into their earnings, etc. Yeah. Do you have uh, favorites, most reliables? What's kind of the pecking order of the giants? Does it matter to think about it like that? Do we just buy a basket? Or should we be selective? I mean, we did see Tesla still trending lower now for years. Yes, I don't think of Magnificent 7. I would say Magnificent 5.5. So Tesla is out. Apple gets half a point uh, with their, their China sales exposure. NVIDIA is the clear beneficiary of all the spend that every company in the world is going to do on AI hardware. So if AI is actually a zero sum game where everyone has to spend just to hold on to their market share, whether it's staples, whether it's telco, whether it's advertising, then the hardware guys win. If, but generally productivity gains, Microsoft and AWS, Azure and AWS will be running the AI workloads. So they'll be next in the pecking order after NVIDIA. And after that, you're into the users in the magnificent zone, like Meta is using AI to increase engagement. Google has kind of dropped the ball, but it should come back and improve. But our preference is more on the, the companies winning from AI spend. And NVIDIA, obviously, in the Magnificent Seven, but there's a whole host of companies in, in US as well, Broadcom or AMD or Arista Networks, et cetera, that will be winning from AI spending. How much confidence do you have in that next order effect? We've already seen the numbers. They're indisputable in the core NVIDIA, which just turned green on the day, by the way. We've seen the numbers <laughs> there. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is amazing. Uh, we've seen kind of the knock-on effect in other chips where the numbers are showing up. But as we make that transition out of the hardware build-out into the secondary hardware support, the Arista stuff you're talking about, and then kind of the tertiary, the services, the ultimate product being produced with all this computing power, those second and third steps, what's the timeline to kind of seeing that come to fruition? So I think the way to think about AI services is twofold. One is truly revolutionary product, productivity gain will go, go through the roof. And we don't know that yet. And uh, we don't, maybe the products, the services that the revolutionary products don't even exist yet. So if I, if we go down to the 90s tech landscape, 
in that case, we didn't know what internet was going to be, but we knew it was a lot of routers. And Cisco became the largest company in the world by 2000. And that's NVIDIA today. We don't really know what AI will be by the back half of the dec decade, but it'll be a lot of GPUs that will be putting that will be put into the workload. So to your question, how sure are we? I would say we're not sure yet. And if just to remind you, like Mike, Facebook was founded in 2004, like 2003. I mean, these are, who knows what the services will come down the road. Google didn't start till late 90s. Like, um, so I would say just own the picks and shovels. I don't know if there's gold in the hills. <laughs> 1849 San Francisco, just make sure you sell a lot of picks and shovels to the guys who want to go digging. Okay, that's the key point is the simicking doctors basically are still the best way to play this. I mean, once again, we see yeah. that there's uh, unique amounts of strength there generally today. The yeah. uh, other kind of follow on products from maybe the cloud stuff, some of the server centers, I mean, that might still kind of be tied to general trailing demand, uh, which I think is kind of showing up in some of these numbers. A lot of these cloud companies are still off their highs. Do you think that we'll eventually get the rally to broaden out to some of those lower cap names? I have seen cloud services overall spend start to stabilize, and we've talked through ServiceNow's number and Snowflake and Datadog, and it it, it is come down from a low level, and when you start doing AI's workloads, you will actually start using a host of other services. So overall tech spending could also bottom and increase. But at the moment, there could just be a risk that workloads moved from traditional tech spend towards AI because companies won't have infinite tech spend budgets. And so I would just still be positioned towards AI related workloads semiconductors as you mentioned but not all semiconductors are ai related obviously and then uh, but there is um, tertiary secondary tertiary sectors that are benefiting and um, we own uh, whether you mentioned data centers they will be benefiting um, thermal power solution heat management for inference uh, we own vertive which is a company that will be benefiting so there is a companies uh, which are going to be benefiting from a like implementing AI workloads beyond just the GPU. But yes, you have to go and find what those companies are. Okay, so it seems like that's a very stock specific uh, kind of research that will bear fruit once the products come to light. So, so right now, basically hanging in the reliable uh, picks and shovels trade, is that generally the way one's portfolio should be skewed? I mean, do I get that by getting the index? If I'm a passive investor, should I be happy that it's as skewed the indexes right now to tech? Or should I be trying to balance some of that out? I uh, We invest thematically. So we create custom baskets. So we have an AI winners basket and like an obesity treatment basket and so on and so forth. So we believe in that process. But to the extent that if someone was to question, hey, S&P 500 is very tech heavy, I would say that's good. I think S&P 500 will outperform global equities going forward as well. And if you think about a valuation challenge on that, I would say, I would not say that it is expensive. It is within that the mix shift has changed. And if you look at companies like Microsoft trading at low 30s PE, which is eight, nine points higher than Walmart or Procter & Gamble at 24. And I would say Microsoft is just as defensive with faster growth, it's justified. Or even Nvidia, two, three, three years forward looking earnings, Nvidia is in at around 30p. So th these earnings are growing fast for these businesses. I don't think in a, in a world where the Fed turns more hawkish again, maybe, doesn't cut as aggressively, the rest of the world will slow down. Emerging markets don't like dollar being strong. Mm -hmm. And in a growth deprived world where China is slowing, these tech giants are the ones delivering the growth. So you want to own them and you want to own S&P 500 if it is tech heavy, but you can be more specific. Yes, like I said, more nuanced into the picks and shovels on AI or other winners. But thematically, yes, this is how you should be positioned. I agree. Okay. It sounds like uh, AI is helping build in a little inflation resistance to the overall market. 
because of the extreme growth that it's offering. So even if the uh, economy stays strong, inflation stays firm, tech has uh, proven that it's uh, arguably the least sensitive. Give me one last thought, Waz, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, to the point where if the AI tech is causing boots on the ground, cement, infrastructure, power grids, all of that for AI, and the Fed has to keep rates high to destroy other parts of the economy because US CPI or PC comes hotter because of the tech spend. You're right, you should even more be positioned towards AI or tech companies because the other dis consumer discretion will be squeezed from higher rates. So yeah, completely agree. All right, Fawaz, really good conversation. Looking forward to more. Thanks a lot for your time. All right, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, My good pleasure. stuff. Good sophisticated analysis on the role AI is going to be playing in the economy is potentially revving up some of the growth. Even if it uh, keeps inflation bid, at least tech will be too. Fawaz Chaudhry, head of equities at Fulcrum Asset Management.